everyone I hope you well and today is going to be slightly different if you wonder what on earth I'm doing there with my hands I was listening to a song which I'm really enjoying lately and it was so so incredibly loud with the roadworks this time or on the day that I was filming that I just couldn't take it anymore you know we had this now for months and months and it's starting to really impact me I really can't stand a continuous noise for too long it sort of um, yeah gets on my uh, something something and so I put my earphones in had my music on and I was absolutely enjoying just that um, lovely illustration painting time so here I have the book which um, came in so handy I found a color um, arrangement from a bouquet so the way this book works is you have all these beautiful bouquets that are arranged according to colors throughout the entire book as you can see here and then they are broken down into color palettes and at the end of the book you have this and even on the side of the page there you can see that color palette they're broken down into a color palette and um, you can basically recreate uh, the same color palette in your artwork whatever it would be so I got inspired by some of the flowers in the bouquet and I went with uh, with that look so it's obviously not the exact uh, color arrangement as it was there but just taking an inspiration for the watercolors I'm using my Daniel Smith watercolor palette and there I have a Naples yellow I believe and I'm mixing um, colors to suit that color palette and as you can see in the top left corner of the sketchbook I swatched out roughly the colors of the color palette so there is a peach there is a uh, like a nude peach and then there is a more of a peach peach and a, some sort of a purple strews and a green here I'm showing you diamine drawing ink or fountain pen ink um, in ancient copper which I used to draw out this um, bouquet and it's a water soluble ink which I absolutely love if you haven't seen the tutorial of the leaves um, of the leaf branch next on the next page so on the right to this drawing then you can um, hopefully I'll, I can link the card and you can watch that as well so it's the same technique and the same ink I used in that illustration so the beauty about this ink is that it can flow into your watercolor and it looks beautifully it's great for that wet into wet technique and it changes the color of the watercolor um, slightly and because it's unpredictable it's not going to be exactly the same everywhere so sometimes you'd get a bit more of the ink uh, flowing and then sometimes it's less and it's just this beautiful um, relaxed approach to watercolor I find it very playful and just lovely so for the day that it was with a lot of stressful noise outside it was uh, the best I could do just play some music and uh, yeah just enjoy some drawing so I'm starting with the petals and drawing out a little bit more of that well actually I'm not drawing out or pulling that ink from the center uh, it just happened to be that when I was drawing the detail in the center of the flower I drew in with a bit more ink more detail so therefore there is more ink sitting on the paper there and therefore it is quite pretty just on the onset of the petal of the flower um, to have that extra bit of depth and you can see how the ink just um, flows and moves unpredictably and beautifully so I really love that look now coming back to the purple purple is my least favorite color in the uh, all of the color <laughs> 
um, existing color groups and color families and I can work with certain purples and there are purples that I absolutely cannot stand but purple as a color is just not my my thing at all and um, I do like it in the color palette there and maybe I should have gone with that exact color palette but I just couldn't I tried it and I had to adjust it to my liking and you will see that um, in a few moments so here I'm just adding a few different colors I think this might have been quinacridone sienna to the already existing mix and that creates a lovely uh, peach color so it's a bit more orange um, the, the previous large flower that is uh, similar in the color on the edges of the petals because of the ink blending into the color but the actual color is actually lighter and these are supposed to be tulips that I am um, painting right now and just you know adding a little bit of quinacridone sienna just at the tip or at the bottom of the flower to again create a little bit more depth um, I wrote down all the recipes of the colors and I actually can refer to them so in the first color we had Naples yellow and opera pink and then I added Naples yellow to or the other way around I added quinacridone sienna to Naples yellow and just sort of mixing them amongst each other trying to create um, other colors and other tones um, so I think this is where I decided to stay away from the purple and mix up more of a analogous color palette in this case which you totally can do no one is you know um, there is no color police <laughs> that will knock on your door and tell you off for using uh, a different color than um, what what is like in a painting that you inspired by or whichever way you know if you don't feel like using a color just stay away from it and there might be a day when you'd be comfortable but I had so many so so many situations that I can recall where I would kind of start a painting or an art piece with purple in mind and think okay well I'm just going to use a little bit of it as an accent and in fact once I made myself pick this traditional yellow slash purple um, color palette I decided to paint a bouquet or flower arrangement with it and oh my gosh I really was struggling during that process um, did I like it in the end no and I think I learned my lesson that best if you feel uncomfortable just stay away from that color palette and adjust it to your liking so here I am thinking okay well maybe I do need a purple or a dark purple maybe to create a bit more contrast because I thought it's all starting to kind of look um, like I said analogous color palette it's still very very attractive and very you know beautiful in my opinion but and it works it's a very um, successful way of putting a color palette together very balanced but I thought I will try it and I thought I'll mix up a different purple than the purple I have up in that corner as a swatch so I carried on and I tried to find a perfect tone that I could be more comfortable with and you can see it I have a few versions there and so once I started adding it into the smallest area of the flower it was just bugging me <laughs> It was just, although looking at it now, I think it's alright. I, I don't think it's that bad. But there is just something about purple. There is something about purple. I have um, shared a while ago reading a book about color, um, color therapy. And it's a great book. I'll try to link it up in the card here somewhere as well. It's uh, it's interesting how certain colors can affect us and sometimes we don't even know what it is. Like maybe there was a part in my life 
uh, that something happened and somehow Purple was involved. I mean, it could be something totally um, banal and, you know, it could be like when you as a child maybe go to, I don't know, see a dentist or something and maybe there was like a painting on the wall that had purple in there and maybe I was like associating that color with discomfort. Something like that it could be, you know, because I consciously cannot think of why uh, I have such a strong dislike to that color. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below if you have any colors that you absolutely don't want to be friends with, you know, you just, you just accept that uh, you agree to disagree and that will be it. So the next color that I will be introducing is green and uh, let's see so for the green I have Naples yellow and green gold and that just softens green gold slightly it kind of makes it a little bit more milkier and a little bit more buttery so as you can see Naples yellow was heavily featured in this um, color palette and I really enjoyed it not a color I would use in the past when starting with watercolor I always um, found opaque watercolors quite difficult to work with uh, but these days I do like it I like that um, I suppose because I am more comfortable with mixed media and what I like about mixed media is combining the transparency and the translucency of watercolor with heavier mediums like gouache or acrylic or oil sticks. Um, in a way you can use sometimes watercolor similar to that which is where the opaque colors come. Of course it's not the same because you're not going to get the texture from acrylics and it's a totally different ball game. Again, I absolutely love how the green here blends with the ancient copper ink. Gorgeous. It's just so simple. If you want to add a little bit more something something to the painting without needing to reach out for pencils or markers um, afterwards, you just want to keep it strictly watercolor but have something there. I think this is the way to go. Really love this combo. So that's a mix here that I have. Well, the two mixes. The center of the flower was that more of a chartreuse kind of uh, softer chartreuse uh, mix up that I did, um, which was the green, gold, and Naples yellow. Then I went into green, gold, and sap green just to deepen it slightly more. And that's the green that I used for the foliage. Love it. Really love it.
then it's time to add a little bit more dimension to the center of the flower and you can see just adding a little bit of a darker toned green just lifts the whole thing immediately i try to soften the um, edges of it to just have something a little bit more blended in but it makes such a big difference there you can still build it up by um, adding a little bit more on top of that middle um, otherwise it would have been a little bit unfinished and a little bit too flat looking I'm also using the brush to pull out lines out of the center again to create extra texture and make it pop a little bit and um, then it's um, time to do the finishing touches which is so easy <laughs> with this ink especially for the ways I just uh, use water that's all I did and I love how the stalks of the flowers how they just blended I had a little bit of green in there and it just sort of blended without being too strong um, you know if you just used a black waterproof ink you would have had just these lines that would still stay there in a dominating way so i love that the fact that uh, this ink is water soluble and it just all becomes a little bit more relaxed and flowy so there i'm actually adding a little bit of kunakudon sienna or on the edges which is a very similar color to the ink in tone and that is pretty much it it was quite quick and enjoyable and i hope you will join in and let me know what you think about it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.